He's heard it all before. You're a pastor. You're not supposed to get political. You shouldn't be talking about these issues, so just stay out of politics and stick to preaching the gospel. Life, marriage, sexuality, borders, ethnicity, these things aren't political. They're biblical. God's Word has much to say about the culture we're living in. This is Our Watch with Tim Thompson. Well, hey, everybody, welcome to the program today. Good Sunday to you. I am Tim Thompson, Senior Pastor of 412 Church in Temecula Valley. Glad to be bringing the Word of God into your life today. I hope it is a blessing to you. With me, as always, is Jake Porter. He is the Assistant Pastor at 412 Church in Temecula Valley. Pastor Jake, always a pleasure to be with you. Yep, it's always great to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we are uh, continuing on verse by verse, chapter by chapter in 2 Corinthians, and doing so very deliberately. As we always say, we want to bring great context into the Word of God. We value uh, knowing all of God's Word. You know, we want to know the whole counsel of God's Word, not just pick and choose the little parts that we like and those uh, those offensive parts or difficult parts. We, we want to put those aside. We don't like doing that. We like to know it all uh, when it comes to God's Word. So important for the uh, the believer to have the whole counsel. And we as we teach, we, we always mention this, that you teach the junior hires and high schoolers. I teach the adults typically. And uh, when we do that, we're teaching the same text, the same points, trying to make sure that uh, the minds of these young adults are growing the way they should, that you know, while the world's trying to indoctrinate them, we want to make sure we're raising them up in the way they should go. That way, as the Bible says, as, as they get older, they won't depart from it. Yep. So, uh, you know, that being said, today we are in 2 Corinthians chapter 8. We're going to be picking up in verse um, 16. And as we do that, we're talking about being good stewards of the resources God has given us. We did preach a message on this recently, and we're going to listen to just a, a little bit of that. And as soon as we're done listening to that, we'll, we'll come back together. We got much to say about stewarding the resources God has given us. So take a listen to this. Today, contextually, as we, as we go through 2 Corinthians 8, we're going to talk very specifically about the church. Now, most of you here today don't work for the church. Most of you aren't in a position to handle the finances of the church. But I think it's important that you know what God's Word says about it. So that way you can go, okay, if this is what God's Word says about it, then Pastor Simon better be doing his job properly. And I can tell you he does. Um, but we'll, we'll get more into detail what is required of the people who manage the finances of the church. God's Word puts it in there. We should know it. But I also want you to understand this. In your own home, okay, your, your family is a ministry. You know, if you're the, the spiritual head of your home, you are the priest of your home. You are responsible for the ministry that is your family. And people, just like people would look to 412 Church and go, okay, what are they doing as a ministry? People will also look to your family and go, what is your family doing as a ministry? And so you have a responsibility for the ministry within your home as well. So the principles we see here today, I want you to understand what God requires of the church, but I also want you to know these are principles that you can use and should use in your own home, your own family ministry as well. So in Luke chapter 16, Jesus is talking to, well, he's talking about religious leaders. He says, if you are faithful in little things, you will be faithful in large ones. But if you're dishonest in little things, you won't be honest with greater responsibilities. And if you are untrustworthy about worldly wealth, who will trust you with the true riches of heaven? And if you, aren't, if you are not faithful with other people's things, why should you be trusted with things of your own? No one can serve two masters, for you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. That is a principle, yes, he's talking to spiritual leaders, but this is a principle that transcends that. It's a principle that you can apply to your own life as well. You cannot serve God and money. When you put together a budget, what are you, what are you doing? What you're doing is being the master over your money. The money is the slave. When you tell your money what it's going to do, when you say, hey, I, you're gonna, I'm going to have my money do this and this and this, you're budgeting, right? But you're mastering your money. You're telling it what to do. You know, when Nikki and I first got married, we were very young. 
She was 19, I was 20, we were kids. And we got married, and, and quite frankly, sadly, we didn't go through pre-marriage counseling. I, would, I look back, I wish we would have. But we didn't, and we got married, and we, didn't, we, weren't, we were not good with our money. We were terrible with it. And there were times where people would say, hey, do you want to go out to the movies with us this Friday? You know, I would actually answer that question this way. Sometimes I would say, I don't know, let me check my account. You know how bad that is? I'm saying, let me ask my money if I'm allowed to go to the movies on Friday night. That's, that is the money being the master over me. I'm asking permission for my money. Now, thankfully, here we are 20, almost 27 years later. We've reversed that role. I tell my money what to do. I already know if I want to go to the movies because I put money aside for it. So there's a role reversal that has to take place in many people's lives where you become the master, the money is the slave. When you get that part right, then it frees God up to be who God is. He's the master over our lives. We are bond servants to him. In other words, we have purposefully put ourselves in a place of submission. He's the master. We're his slave. He gets to tell us what to do. We say, yes, sir. You know, yes, Lord. Um, that is how it's supposed to be. You can't have to. You can't say, well, I'm going to love and serve God, but I'm also going to ask my money what I can do. That doesn't work because you have two masters at that point. God says you can't serve two masters. You're going to love one or you're going to love the other one, but you're not going to love them both. You can't love them both. And he goes on in uh, verses 14 and 15. He says, the Pharisees who dearly loved their money. Now, these are the religious leaders. They dearly loved their money, heard all this, and scoffed at Jesus. They said to, he said to them, he says, you're like, you like to appear righteous in public, but God knows your hearts. What this world honors is detestable in the sight of God. These spiritual leaders, these people in charge of what would take place at the temple, these people who were responsible for being an example to the families around them, they loved money. And Jesus was telling them it's detestable in the sight of God. So we're going to talk about what the church does, how they're supposed to steward the resources that God gives us, uh, but we're also going to give you the same principles you can apply to your own family life. Yeah, you, we need to make sure that we're we're not limiting this to just the church leadership, but anybody who's listening right now who, you know, you're part of a family, these principles are good for your home as well. And one of those principles is this, that when we're, we're stewarding the resources that God has entrusted to us, we need to select the right people to be involved. And that, you know, that is true in the church. It's true within the home as well. Second Corinthians chapter eight says in verse 16, thanks be to God who puts the same earnest care for you into the heart of Titus. For he not only accepted the exhortation, but being more diligent, he went to you of his own accord. So Titus went and he was part of this. Verse 18 tells us that Paul um, had sent um had sent him with the brother. So there was another person, right, whose praise is in the gospel throughout all the churches. And not only that, but who also was chosen by the churches to travel with us with this gift. So there's the monetary gift that we've been talking about, mm -hmm. which is administered by us to the glory of the Lord himself and to show you um, show your ready mind. So let's pause there for a moment in the in the middle there of verse 19. There's this person that was entrusted. Now, who was this person? We don't know. The Bible, the reason we don't know is the Bible just doesn't tell us who it is. But yeah. what it does tell us about this person is that his praise was in the gospel and that the churches chose him. And that's important, that his praise is in the gospel. He's a man who has been chosen, selected. There's, there's something about his character that is good, something about who this is as a person that can be trusted with this money. And that's super important for for the church today to select people who can be trusted with money. Uh, it's important with a family as well yeah. that you select the right people. Yeah, you know, you take your <clears throat> your finances in the home. You know, do you 
go ask your little kids like, oh, hey, you know, what what should we be doing with our finances this month? You know, well, OK, that's probably not the, the best decision. OK, so we who should is, buy cookies. Yeah, <laughs> I'm getting a new bike. I'm right. getting this, you yeah. know, you know, so who are the right people involved? You know, hopefully if there's a, a, a husband or a father, you know, hopefully he's being the spiritual leader and kind of leading that. But, uh, you know, having the right people involved and if if the, the wife is somebody that can be involved in that and and hopefully they're on the same page with their finances right. and you know lead their their family together right uh financially then you know you've got to have the right individuals involved right. depending on who's leading your household right and it and as you said you know hopefully the man is leading the household it is the man's job and and Biblically speaking, the structure of the home, the the man, the, the husband is the leader of the home. Yeah. And a good leader will delegate when he's not good at something. Yeah. Hey, I'm going to delegate this to you. And in some marriages, it is the wife who is better financially. She's better with numbers. She's better with saving. She's better with being frugal. And so you entrust to the wife the responsibility of managing the, the household finances. That's not always the case. Um, sometimes it's the the man who's better at it. In the case of my family, you know, we we tried going kind of back and forth. We tried different accounts. We tried, you know, okay, you have your account, I'll have my account, but we'll both have access to each other's account. Oh, well, let's just try having one account. Um, you manage it. You try to pay the bills, or I'll pay the bills. And we we tried several things until we got what worked for us yeah. as a married couple. What we found was, I am better at numbers. I'm better at saving. You know, my wife is frugal, but she's not good with numbers. And so we had to kind of select who's the right one to do this. For us, it was me. But I know many, you know, countless couples where it's the wife. You know, the, yeah. guy, the guy's just not good at it. Yeah. Whatever the case is, you want to select the right person to be involved in that. If a person's not good at it, but you have them do it anyways, they're going to be frustrated in the situation. It's going to frustrate the whole family. It, within a church, if you have the wrong person, like, hey, well, we're going to have you manage the finances of the church. Well, I'm not good at it. Well, you're doing it anyways. Well, you're putting somebody in a, in a position that they're going to be frustrated in, and it's going to the whole church is going to suffer. Yeah. So you really, truly have to select the right people. Um, Second Corinthians was written approximately A.D. 57, and it was in A.D. 66 when Paul wrote to Titus. Now, Titus is one of the guys that was trusted here. Mm -hmm. And um, in 80, AD 66, Paul wrote to Titus about elders. Now, this is the position within the church that we're talking about, somebody who would manage the church and manage the responsibilities of the church. And in Titus chapter 1, verse 7, he says, an elder is a manager of God's household, so he must live a blameless life. He must not be arrogant or quick-tempered, must not be a heavy drinker, violent, or dishonest with money. Yep. You know, being honest with your finances is super important for a position of elder within the church. It's also very, very important within a family structure that you're honest with your money. You're not hiding money. You're not. You're, and I always say this: if if you're hiding something, if if you don't let your spouse see what's going on with the money, what are you hiding? Yeah, that's a problem. Yeah, that's a problem. I can tell you, I mean, I've seen this time and time again, when a husband is hiding money from his wife or a wife is hiding money from the husband, I always ask him, what do you have going on? Yeah. What do you have going on that you don't want that person to see? And same thing within a church. Oh, well, we're not going to show you this account over here and what we're doing this account. Why not? What are you hiding? Yeah. It's just not good. There, We have a whole lot more to talk to uh, to uh, our, our audience about this, stewarding the resources God has given us. we got to take a quick break and listen to a word from our sponsor. We'll be right back after this. We are in a free speech war. With big tech, Biden is going after independent news that doesn't lockstep with them on COVID, shots, adverse effects, and early treatments. If you value Valley News' award-winning, unbiased journalism and community coverage without a left slant, please support us by going to myvalleynews.com forward slash subscribe and sign up for $5 a month. We can do this. All right, welcome back to the second half of Our Watch. I'm Tim Thompson. With me, as always, is Jake Porter. And we left the first half of this. We were talking about stewarding the resources God has given us. And contextually here, we were talking about uh, selecting the right people to be involved in the church and, you know, who's going to handle this. We talked about the qualifications of an elder or a pastor, whatever position you want to call that with our church, we call us pastors and elders. Um, but 
people have different terms for that. But the point is somebody who is going to be able to oversee the affairs of the church. And one of the things it says is they have to not be dishonest with money. Yeah. And one of the things I've seen is I've seen pastors who will hang out with the large tithers. That's one of the things that, that we do at 412 Church, and you know this very well, is um, you don't know who how much money people give to the church. And I don't know how much money people give to the church. And we've done that deliberately. Like, I don't, I don't want to know what somebody gives. That's between that person and the Lord. So I purposely have placed myself in a position where I don't get to see who gives what. And what that does is it helps me avoid any accusation that I'm only buddy, buddy with the big tithers. Yeah. You know, because there are pastors that will do that. They'll find out who the big tithers are, and then they just go and cater to what they want. Yeah. And that that's never a good thing. Yeah, I mean, I know for myself, like, I don't ever want to be caught in my, in my flesh or tempted for any reason to treat somebody differently because it's like, oh, that person, you know, they're, they're really supporting what, what we're doing or something. So here, we'll, we'll treat them differently. Right. Like, I don't ever want to be tempted with that. Like, I have no clue, you know, who gives what, like you're saying, you know, right. there are certain times where it's like, if somebody's going to be real involved in a ministry, is there like a yes or no kind of thing? Like, do right. they, or do they not? Right. Are they showing that they're placing their trust with their finances in God right. or are they not? Right. I don't care if it's a penny or X amount of dollars. We don't ask that right. question. Right. right. You know, it's just a yes or no. kind. Yeah. Of thing. Are they regularly invested in what God's doing financially? Yeah. Right. Right. You know, and, and one of the things that we do, you know, we'll have regular meetings with the church where um, we'll invite people out. We'll open up the books. We'll show them you know, how much money's coming in, how much money's going out, what we spend that on, we break it down percentage wise. Hey, mm -hmm. X percent goes to to insurances. X percent is to payroll. X percent is to keeping the lights on. You know, we break that down and show them this is how much money the church brings in. This is how much money goes out. This is how much money's left over. Yeah. And and the people we invite to come to those meetings are people who have contributed financially. Yeah. And we do that because I I I believe this that if somebody is trusting the Lord with their money, and they're doing that at our congregation, within our fellowship, then they should be privy to that information. They should they should see, okay, I you know, I see what's happening here. I agree. I want to continue to be involved yeah. and invest in what God's doing here at 412 Church. So I, I think that's an important thing and that that is um that's being, you know, transparent. It's showing what, that we're we're living above reproach. That yeah. we're we're not out frugally spend. I mean, we're frugally spending your money. We're not out frivolously yeah. spending the money. And I think that's important for people to see. And that that leads us to verse twenty because it it talks about this idea of being transparent. It says avoiding this. So there's something that that we should avoid when it comes to being a steward of God's finances. This is what we should avoid. He says that anyone should blame us in this lavish gift which is administered by us, providing honorable things, not only in the sight of the Lord, but also in the sight of men. So what he's saying is we're going to avoid that. We're, we're going to be transparent with this money. We're going we're gonna to avoid even the accusation. So, you know, we, we want to make sure that we do everything we can that there is that we're transparent with what's happening financially. One of the things that we do um, as we receive the money at the church is – we um, and and I thought this was great. One one of the women who handles the money actually asked for this. She said, "Can we have cameras in the room pointed down, showing what we're doing with the money?" Like she wanted that accountability. She wanted us as the pastors to see what she is doing as she's counting money you know, and and to to make sure that it's not like okay one for the church and then one for me put yeah. it in my pocket and then one yeah. for the church and oh and i need a new whatever so let me put one more in my pocket like there isn't anything like that happening and there's multiple layers of that that type yeah. of security that takes place we, you know the person who's counting the money never counts the money alone there's always at least one more person there with them counting the money with them. And then that money then gets put into a sealed bag and that sealed bag gets deposited at the bank. And there's a report that gets given and then records the report is balanced out with what the bank had. Everything is above reproach. Everybody can see this. Everybody that, that 
gives financially to the church gets invited to these meetings so they can see it. And there's about, you know, there's transparency. We're yeah. above reproach. And I think that's super important. Yeah. There's transparency all over when it comes to that, you know, it says not in the sight of Lord, but also in the sight of men. So we could be doing everything the same exact way, doing everything right, doing everything that the way that we should. And, and God would know that we're doing the right thing, but also in the eyes of those that are contributing through right. our church, right? right? They need to understand that. They need to understand, okay, this is what uh, this is what I'm giving towards, and this is how God is going to use those resources through this church, and that's what they're doing, you right. know? And I think that's important as well. Right. Uh, another thing, as we steward the resources God has entrusted to us, we have to have a plan and not act hastily. And that, again, that's not just the church. That is something that you can apply to your family as well, because every spiritual leader of their home has their own ministry at home. Your family is your ministry. And we, when you talk about your finances, you can't act hastily with money. You need to have a plan. You need to think these things through. And that's biblical. It says in Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 1, that concerning the ministering, to the saints, it is superfluous for me to write to you. For I know your willingness about which I boast of you to the Macedonians that Achaia was ready a year ago and your zeal is stirred up the majority. Yet I have sent the brethren, lest our boasting of you should be in vain in this respect, that as I said, you may be ready. So this is the whole idea of of having a plan. I want you to be ready. He says, lest If some uh, should be ashamed of this confident boasting, I'm sorry, yet, yet, I'm sorry, less, verse four says, lest if some Macedonians come with me and find you unprepared. So look, I want you to be ready. When, when these people come with me, I don't want them to show up and see you unprepared. And he goes on to say, we, not to mention you should be ashamed of this confident boasting. So he says, look, I've been boasting about you guys. I've been telling them how you want to be a part of this. So I'm letting you know ahead of time I'm showing up. I want you to be prepared. I don't want you to be found unprepared. He says, therefore, in verse 5, he says, therefore, I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren to go to you ahead of time. So I'm going ahead of time. We're making a plan. We're going to succeed in this. He says, and prepare your generous gift beforehand. Make sure you're ready to be a part of what God is doing financially. He says, which you had previously promised that it may be ready as a matter of generosity and not as a grudging obligation. So you don't want to get into that moment and go, okay, well, now I got to give. Okay, everybody else is giving. I'm going to give. No, you have prepared beforehand and are ready to give. And that... That is something that my wife and I have have loved doing is is not just giving to the Lord financially, but also we we have a separate account where we just put money in every time we we get paid. And it's not much, but like we'll put money in every week. You know, every time we get paid, there's something going in there and it just builds and builds and builds. Then then when the Lord puts on our heart, hey, do this. We got the money. We we had a plan to be involved. Yeah, yeah. It's important to have a plan. It's it's kind of that idea that you know we've talked about before of you're controlling and telling your money what it's doing. It's not your money controlling you. Right. Right. You know, you're not just like, oh, okay. Well, I I guess I'm here. I'm going to throw something in there because I, well, this is just what people are doing. No, there's a a, a plan. And I, I know for me, I have things planned out, bills planned out, things planned out. And I know that, okay, this is the amount that's going to tie. This is the amount going to this, this, and it's telling it what my money's doing. Right. And and I know what I'm going to give. And if there's a, an abundance, then okay, maybe there's going to be more, who knows, you know, but there's a, a, a plan of this is how it's going to be handled. Right. You know, same thing goes for in the church. There's a plan of how the, the income is handled. Right. You have a plan when you have a plan. Um, and you're not acting hastily, you're just ready, ready to be involved in what God has you to do. That's all the time we have today. Pastor Jake, thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, I just want to encourage you all, be a good steward of what God has given you. If you want to know how you can enter into a relationship with the Lord, we'd love to talk to you more about that. You can reach us at info at rwatch.com. Other than that, we will see you next week right here on Our Watch with Tim Thompson. This has been a production of Our Watch with Tim Thompson. We hope you are encouraged to engage the culture around you. We want to invite you to connect with Pastor Tim by going to the Connect page on ourwatch.com. That's O-U-R watch.com. Until next time, 
This is all of us at Our Watch, reminding you to be bold, be strong, and to take back the public square.